session this evening. Let us first of all begin with some prayers. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharni Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatya Dejatarni Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pramanityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasadi Gaura Bhaktarinda <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Vanchakalpaturubhyas cha kripa sindubhya eva cha, Paditanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. So, devotees, welcome to the third evening, third session on Vaishnav etiquette. And as I've mentioned already, but I'll just say it again, on a certain level, it can be said or thought that Vaishnav etiquette <coughs> is, you know, a collection of rules and regulations do's and do nots. So in that sense, it's sort of just, well, you could say behavioral or something like that. But as you have noticed, I guess, we've been trying on on the first evening, we told the story of Lord Chaitanya with Sanatana Goswami. On Friday evening, we told the story of, we read the story of Kalidas, and they're both just amazing accounts of real happen happenings, which are just, or, or within which, in the first story, it's just the general principle of Vaishnav etiquette was just so deeply uh, present. What it is, why it is, how it is. And then on Friday, in regard to Kalidas and his humility, it's just, it's certainly, I mean, if we at least absorb ourselves in it all, it certainly takes us way beyond just simple behavior. Just should I do this or should I do that? What's good, what's not good? Although those considerations, of course, are always going to be there. <coughs> So otherwise, you know, the book's there. You can just read through and make some notes. And in this situation, I should do this. In that situation, I should do that. And But Vaishnav etiquette is really, well, it's sadhacha. It's Vaishnav behavior. How Vaishnavs real Vaishnavs, and don't worry, you're all real Vaishnavs, but there are other Vaishnavs who are even more real, and more advanced, how they behave and how they think and how they feel and how they appreciate, how they appreciate um, devotees, the Lord, so, yeah, actually, it's it's very deep, and it's not just rules and regulations and what is good to do and what's not good to do. 
<coughs> although those things are there too. So this is what we're going to be doing, sort of analyzing these things, giving examples, giving examples this evening. We'll give some examples. Actually, we'll continue discussing humility because it's just such an important aspect of, of Vaishnavism, of being a devotee, and therefore of Vaishnav etiquette. And we'll tell you, we'll recite a few things to you uh, of Srila Prabhupada's humility, which may, anyway, I don't know if you will have heard them, but they, they may even astonish you a little, the humility of Srila Prabhupada. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> and we, we are continuing looking at the subject of humility because it's just so extremely important and, and valuable and deep and just rich with transcendental nectar. <clears throat> and I think, if you don't mind, just for a couple of minutes, I want to just read again the, the last, it's actually four verses regarding Kalidas, just so the ideas imprint themselves in our minds. Okay, so this is uh, Antialila chapter 16, and I'm going to begin with verse 60 and just read four verses. Bhakta pada duli ara, bhakta pada jal, bhakta bukta avashesha, tina mahabal, the dust of the feet of a devotee the water that has washed the feet of a devotee, and the remnants of food left by a devotee are three very powerful substances. Etina seva haite, Krishna prema haya, puna puna sarva shastre, pukariya kaya. By rendering service to these three, one attains the supreme goal of ecstatic love for Krishna. In all the revealed scriptures, this is loudly declared again and again. Tate bara bara kahi, shuna bhaktagana, vishvasa kariya kara, etina sevan. Therefore, my dear devotees, please hear from, from me, for I insist again and again. Please keep faith in these three and render service to them without hesitation. Tina Haite, Krishna Nama, Premira Ulas, Krishnera Prasada Tate, Sakshi Kalidas. From these three, one achieves the highest goal of life, ec ecstatic love of Krishna. This is the greatest mercy of Lord Krishna. The evidence <coughs> is Kalidas himself. So it's an, a truly amazing narration, and I would suggest if you're not so familiar with it, that in your spare time, you go through it and just see the example of Kalidas, his extreme humility, amazing humility. 
which was so much appreciated by Lord Chaitanya. Uh, appreciated to the point that Lord Chaitanya gave Kalidas more mercy than he gave anyone. And someone asked me at the end, at the, on Friday night, it must have been Friday night, uh, is Kali Das in Krishna Leela also? Who, who was that? Anyway, it was, it was you, okay. So yes, um, in Gora Ganadesh Dipika <coughs> of Kavikarnapur, uh, where Gora Ganadesh Dipika means a light, Dipika, a light on the Gora Gana, the, the associates of Lord Chaitanya, but in the context of Krishna Leela. So there it said that Kalidas was Mali Devi, the daughter of a Pulinda. Means not really a, a prominent person in Krishna Leela, but she's definitely there. Pulinda means the a sort of kind of like aboriginal forest dweller type people. Yeah. So she, Kalidas, was a, a woman or a girl, the daughter of one of those forest dwellers. So I want to give you a few examples just for a few minutes. You can listen and and really just try and take this in and you know should probably fasten your seat belts because some of it's just wow really amazing uh, these are some quotes from Srila Prabhupada in which he expresses his humility and the first one, actually the first one, would you believe I just stumbled on this morning somehow? Uh, so this first one is Srila Prabhupada addressing the BBT artists um, who were to make the paintings for Chaitanya Charitamrita at the beginning, right at the beginning of that whole project, if you're familiar with it, they had been doing, completing one book every two months, and Prabhupada said now, well, the, uh, the production manager, the BBT, the one who got all the books printed, he said, Prabhupada was saying, you know, we want this Chaitanya Charitamrita printer, just ASAP. And the, the production manager, Radha Vallabha, who I knew a bit, he said to Prabhupada, well, you know, what we'll do, we'll really get it together. They, they were doing one book every two months. He said, we will double it. We will do a book every month. And Srila Prabhupada said, No, you will do, do all 17 books in two months. <laughs> it's just like another dimension of service and, and endeavor. So the production manager, Radha Vallabha Prabhu, protested and famously said to Prabhupada, what did he say? Impossible. That's impossible. <laughs> and Prabhupada famously replied, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. So 
they did it. Yeah, I mean, they more or less did it. Impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. Then, if you were really sort of sharp, you could then say, well, Srila Prabhupada, I am a fool, so impossible is a word in my dictionary. <laughs> but that would not have been appropriate. <laughs> so, but the devotees were all like, what? What? What, what do you mean? Just in, in shock. They were just in shock. So this one devotee, actually the minister of book distribution, sent out this morning this quote which I've never seen before, um, which apparently is from Srila Prabhupada. So listen to this. So Prabhupada's addressing the shocked feelings of the devotees and the, the feelings like, you know, how on earth these types of feelings and ideas. And Prabhupada says, I understand that you feel helpless and totally inadequate and you're in great anxiety that you cannot do this. Yet, that is exactly the mood that I want you to be chanting with. I want you to be in so much anxiety, so anxious, in so much desperation, that when you call out to Krishna, it is from the core of your heart. It should be the greatest desperation that anyone has ever felt in life. That is how I want you to chant Hare Krishna, while your hand is moving. And if you do that day after day, crying to Krishna for help every single day, then you will learn how to be an artist. That is all the training you need. How's that? That's quite something, isn't it? That is quite something. Okay, <clears throat> so... Here is something from a conversation of Srila Prabhupada's. Devotee asks, how can one remain humble in executing his devotional service? Because we're talking about humility, of course. Prabhupada, yes. If he thinks himself that I am non-entity, helpless, then he can remain humble. If he thinks I can do something, I've got so much intelligence, then he cannot become humble. Just like child is humble always because, because he knows that I'm completely helpless. Unless mother helps me, I'm completely helpless. Therefore, whenever he's in need of something, he cries, Mother, help me. This is helplessness, helplessness, always. Karpanye, this is one of the items of surrender. Unless you think yourself helpless, you cannot surrender. Surrender is complete when you think yourself that you are helpless. I am helpless, but because I am surrendered to Krishna, he'll save me. This faith must be there, that although I am helpless, I am factually helpless, but because I am surrendered to Krishna, I have no danger. He'll help me, protect me. This is very wonderful in regard to humility. And again, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, when I left your country on the 22nd of July, I had very little hope to come back again, but Krishna informed me that I'm not going to die immediately. Therefore, I've come back again to get inspiration of Krishna consciousness from you all good souls. Although officially I am your spiritual master, I consider you all students as my spiritual master because 
<clears throat> because your love for Krishna and service for Krishna teach me how to become a sincere Krishna conscious person. It's a pretty amazing. And if you thought that was pretty amazing, listen to this. Devotee, you must be higher than the Paramahansa stage, Prabhupada. Prabhupada, I'm lower than you. I'm lower than you. Devotee, <coughs> you are so beautiful. You are Paramahansa, but still you're preaching to us. Prabhupada, <clears throat> no, I'm lower than you. I'm the lowest of all creatures. <clears throat> I'm simply trying to execute the order of my spiritual master. That's all. That should be the business of everyone. Try your best. Try your best to execute the higher order. That is the safest way of progressing. One may be in the lowest stage, but if he tries to execute the duty entrusted upon him, he is perfect. He may be in lower stage, but because he's trying to execute the duty entrusted to him, then he is perfect. That is the consideration. And another one, I think the last one, yeah. From my personal point of view, I think that I am so sinful that I cannot even approach Krishna to ask him to show me any favor. But I have only one hope, my spiritual master. <clears throat> he is very kind. So some way or other, he is dragging me towards Krishna. That is the only hope. Sri, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita says, therefore, Guru Krishna, by the mercy of the spiritual master and by the mercy of Krishna, one gets into Krishna consciousness. Narada Muni is our original spiritual master, and he has dragged so many fallen souls towards Krishna, and we are also hoping to be dragged by him through the disciplic succession. Otherwise, if we study our own qualifications, there is none. Rather, I have got so many disqualifications. So these are Srila Prabhupada's personal words. And th there's more. This is just a few excerpts. But there's more of Srila Prabhupada expressing himself in such ways. You know, if you've got... Prabhupada's books on computer, you can do some research and you can find some very amazing things. Prabhupada says in, a mo in moods of extreme humility. So we need to develop humility. As part of our Vaishnav etiquette, you know, if we just look at it in terms, sort of behavioral terms, we don't want to be sort of pompous people, you know, kind of arrogant people. We don't want to be like that. Because devotees and even just people <clears throat> but particularly devotees are very sharp. And if there's some pomposity and, you know, high opinion of oneself, devotees can pick it up really quickly. Which is one thing, but just the fact that it's there is, is the problem, not the fact that they've seen it. So, humility, it's the first of our points here uh, in regards to Vaishnav etiquette, Vaishnav behavior, and that's, that's correct. It's the foundation. 
if we can cultivate humility, then, then simply by doing that, practically any situation we get into with practically anyone will be able to conduct ourselves nicely with nice etiquette, nice interactions and like that. So it's really important. I don't think, actually I just can't remember, if last week I suggested to you what you could possibly do if you are finding it difficult to become humble, uh, well, I could mention, let me just mention one thing, is that when it comes to developing humility, for us, Kali Yuga people, we have certain advantages over, for example, associates of Lord Chaitanya, associates of Lord Krishna, associates of the great previous acharyas and so on. We, we have one, you know, in, in a sense or in principle, it's a great uh, sort of positive advantage that we have in terms of humility in that we have so much to be humble about. Do you get what I mean? I mean, we have got, with respect, so many things wrong with us. Gosh, it's pretty amazing. And all of those things, if we're to whatever degree we're conscious of them and aware of what the sort of the implications are of, of having such characteristics and defects and so on, then very quickly we'll become humble because we'll see, just look at me, oh no. And then a genuine feeling of humility will just naturally manifest uh, just by seeing the reality, that's all. But oftentimes we don't see those things. As Srila Prabhupada said in one of those quotations we read, that if you feel that yeah, I'm intelligent, I, I can do different things, and you know, I'm qualified, then how are you going to manifest humility? Srila Prabhupada, I mean, when I first read that, the one where Prabhupada says, I'm the lowest, uh, it was sh quite shocking. But it's obvious that Srila Prabhupada actually feels that. It's not just like some sort of, you know, saying it because... You're meant to say such things. But he really feels like that. He's actually seeing himself like that. A as we know, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charitamrita, he says, you know, you know, he, he is on such a high level really such a super high level. But he says, because he feels, he says, I am lower 
than the worm in stall. If anyone simply hears my name, they become sinful. You know, some would say that this this thinking will lead to depression and sort of, you know, excessive negativity about oneself. But you note how Prabhupada presented it. You note that Srila Prabhupada said that I, I feel myself to be like that, but still I have a hope. I have a hope. My hope is my spiritual master. And then he elaborates on that a little that by the shelter of my spiritual master, I can be successful. So for us, we, we shouldn't be afraid of such realizations about ourselves. We shouldn't be afraid of them if they come or start coming because we should know that despite me being like what I'm like what I am if I take shelter of Srila Prabhupada if I take shelter of the devotees then even me even I can be delivered and go back to Godhead so in that way a devotee, even in an extremely humble state of mind and perceiving himself or herself, you know, the shortcomings in such, you know, vivid ways, but the devotee can still be enthusiastic, extremely enthusiastic and, and inspired and happy in Krishna consciousness. It's, you know, it's not actually contradictory, but people might feel it is. Uh, so one prayer, this is a prayer which we suggest sometimes to devotees. If you're struggling to realize, to see that actually you are a, a bit of a fool with respect. <laughs> if you're struggling to see that actually, you know, I'm really, gosh, I am pretty stupid and unqualified. You could pray to Krishna something like this. It's just an idea. My dear Krishna, my dear Lord Krishna, my dear Srila Prabhupada, I know I'm a fool, but the problem is that I'm such a fool that I cannot see what a fool I am. So please help me to start to realize what a fool I am and what's wrong with me and what needs to be corrected. Please help me to realize these things so that I can actually develop real humility that I am like that, oh my gosh. And then with dependency on the spiritual master, on Srila Prabhupada, on Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, one can become very humble in a genuine way, not just a hype, not just hyped up that, yeah, I'm a fool, 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 and just sort of brainwash yourself or something like that. But, but genuine feeling of humility, but with a basis of inspiration and enthusiasm due to knowing that the mercy of the Lord and the devotees is there. So now I want to go on to the next heading there, which is 
offering obeisances. And, you know, I made the comment on the first day that there are certain things in this book, well, I mean, they, they just said outright that it's designed for an Indian audience. But there are some things which, you know, I've been around a while. I don't know where they got these things. Yeah, and, and frankly, the very first thing under offering obeisances you know, honestly, I don't know where they got it from. And I don't do it. And I don't know other devotees who do it. But anyway, let's just read through. So offering obeisances. Upon entering the temple, one should first offer obeisances, punch anga pranam. Well, punch anga Punch means five, and anga means limbs, literally. And you see that little picture there? That's a devotee doing punch anga pranams. The feet, well, I don't know what, the legs, the arms, and the head, I think you'd say. Five, yeah, parts of the body being, being touched to the ground. So, should first offer obeisances, punch anga pranam, to the assembled Vaishnavas and utter the prayer, Vanchikalpa Turubias Cha Kripa Sindhu Bia Eva Cha, Pati Dhanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavebyo Namo Namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord. They're just like desiredries who can fulfill the desires of everyone, and they're full of compassion for for all the fallen conditioned souls. I mean, I don't know if any of you do that, but I don't. (laughs) I go in, I offer my obeisances to Srila Prabhupada, who is my savior. I feel he's the first port of call, you know, the first place I've got to submit myself is to my Savior, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, You may uh, feel like offering uh, prayers to the deities. That's possible. I I would say, just do what you feel you're inspired to do. And don't worry too much about, you know, being sort of finickety about things. Uh, We do, obviously, uh, just before, uh, after Mongol Arati and prayers, you know, in the different things we do before Tulsi Puja, we offer our obeisances to the devotees. Personally, I mean, that's... The way we do thing do do that part of the program basically is very you know it's very standard i mean may, you know maybe in some temples they read something and in another temple they read something else, or maybe the sequence is entire is not entirely the same, but what we do is very normal. It's really very normal in Iskon temples in my, you know, I've had a little experience. So, you know, I would say do what you feel comfortable with in that regard. When you first enter the temple, then one should offer obeisances, full dandavatsla men, to Srila Prabhupada, keeping him on our left and chant his Pranam mantras, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, etc. One should then move towards the deities and offer full prostrated obeisances, keeping the deities on our left side and chant their respective pranam mantras. Okay. 
or you can just chat chant Prabhupada's pranam mantras or your spiritual master's pranam mantra or mantras. It may be noted that one should not offer obeisances on one hand. Both hands should support the body while bowing down and both hands should be outstretched. Well, that's true. That's very true. Um, we are in, in just here on the, on the left-hand side, we are pointed to these appendixes. Let's just go there and have a look at these appendixes because they're, they're relevant, actually. Here we are, right. Page... What, 32, page 32, offering obeisances. Uh, you know, first of all, they make a point in the early morning or whenever visiting the temple, one should offer obeisances to the deities only after waking them because it's enjoined in Shastras that one should not disturb the Lord by offering obeisances when the Lord is resting or bathing. Well, anyway. I wouldn't say that's, you know, when the next paragraph, one should offer obeisances just outside the deity room and not inside. Um, that's basically correct for pujaris. I think we do like that, isn't it? Yeah. For pujaris, that's correct. We don't go in onto the altar and offer obeisances generally, but outside uh, we offer obeisances. So, you know, one thing, I was having a discussion with Giri Raj Maharaj, or I was asking him questions, put it that way, many years ago. I mean, it was, it was, I would say, probably in the 80s, or it might have been the early 90s, but anyway, it was really a good number of years ago. And we were talking about certain standards like like what's mentioned here, not disturb the Lord when he's resting, which that one I'm not familiar with, frankly, but Giriraj Maharaj told me something to the effect that when the deity is resting, then, you know, early in the morning or in the middle of the day or early afternoon, then if we circumambulate, we should chant quietly. And he said that Prabhupada told him that we should do like that because if Krishna knows that his devotee is there, but Krishna cannot see his devotee, Prabhupada said, Krishna will feel frustrated. You heard that? Krishna will feel frustrated. <laughs> It's very personal. Anyway, the, these are some considerations in regards to the pujaris not offering obeisances in, you know, the altar room. Okay, that's there. Uh, other things, you know, maybe with a grain of salt or two. But there's something of importance here. There's Ashtanga Pranam. Are you on page 32? So, you, yeah, you can see there. Ashtanga Pranam and Panch Anga Pranam. We just mentioned briefly Panch Anga. Let's have a look at these, though, because this is of interest. Hari Bhakti Vilas tells how to offer Dandavat Pranams. 
Offer obeisances with eight angas, your feet, knees, chest, hands, head, sight, mind, and words. Okay? With your two feet, knees, chest, hands, and head touching the ground, and with your eyes downcast and half open, recite a suitable prayer while meditating that your head is under the Lord's lotus feet. Yeah, actually, Harry Bhakti Vilas says that. One should meditate when one's offering dandavats in front of the deities. Meditate that one's head is under the foot of the Lord. Uh, your hands should be extended out in front of your head, not next to your head or tucked in next to your chest. So you can see the pictures there, and they're, they're appropriate. You know, one thing it says in Hari Bhakti Vilas, let's see. Okay, let's just read about Panchanga Pranam first. So it's on the next page. To make, to make Panch Anga Pranam, offer obeisances with five Angas, knees, arms, head, intellect, and words. Yes. It is an offense to offer obeisances with only one hand. That is, with one hand extended in front of the head, while the other holds a bead bag or some or, or other sacred it, item off the floor. Before offering obeisances, set down anything you're holding. Right. Now, in, in the eighth chapter of Nectar of Devotion, that's the chapter which is all about offenses. And we mentioned the other day, the first day, I guess, about uh, entering the temple with shoes on in a palanquin or in a car. You remember that? That's the first of what they call the Seva Aparads. There are two types of offenses. Nam Aparads. I mean, there's other types too, but main types for us. Nam aparads means the ten offenses. Seva aparads means offenses in the course of rendering service in different ways, doing different things. So, uh, this offense of offering obeisances with only one hand is offense number six. If you have a look there in your Nectar of Devotion, you'll see that it's stated very clearly, we should not offer obeisances with one hand. Ideally, you should put your bead bag or whatever you might have on one side and then offer obeisances with both hands. Uh, you know, in the pictures there, it looks like they've got a little confused because, you know, they've ticked the first one, which is fine. They've ticked the second one, too. And he's holding his bead bag. <laughs> so that should be a, a cross should be there, it, it appears. I mean, it's true, a cross should be there. It's not really ideal. You know, it's a saver apparat. And one point in principle is that it's not that terribly serious. You know, if you do like that somehow or other, you offer obeisances, you're holding a bead bag or a book or something. You know, it's not that the Yamadutas are going to come and just tear you to shreds. But it's better not to do that. It's better not to do that. Yeah. Uh, so then he goes, they go on, 
men may perform either type of pranam, ashtanga, you know, fully prostrate, or panchanga, on sort of hands and knees, basically. But women traditionally perform only panchanga pranam. And, you know, this is actually, it's in Hari Bhakti Vilas, and in fact, I just checked yesterday to make sure. And you know what uh, it says there? Why ladies, as a general rule, uh, only do panchanga pranam? And, and that's because the, if the breasts of a woman are not are ideally not to touch the ground because they're such essential life giving life sustaining and just you know full of life uh, parts of the female body now i do know that some ladies including some senior ladies in the last few years They've got into doing Ashtanga pranams. All I can say is Hari Bol. That, that's what I say. And if anyone wants to, you know, I'm not going to say anything openly. <laughs> but it, I think it's the way it's put here, traditionally, is nice, is accurate, and sort of uh, respectful. Yeah, so that's, you know, why they separated this out from, you know, back in the beginning there and made this an appendix, uh, I don't know, but we are looking at these things, we're putting them together. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to, yes, page, what is it? Page four. I'm going to go back to page four. Um, okay. Well, we've sort of covered that, but... I want to refer to a few things. Here's a few things. Listen to these. About obeisances. Yeah. Because obe obeisances are something very deep. You know, we're prostrating ourselves either completely on the floor or, or on our hands and knees. You know, that's really quite something. We're, we're obviously really offering respect. And, you know, humility, we just discussed. And offering obeisances, it's also, a, you can say it's part of humility. And, you know, they're very intimately connected together. So... We should take seriously obeisances. We should not do what Srila Prabhupada called lazy man's obeisances. This is what I, one of the things I was told when I first joined. Lazy man's obeisances means you are sitting cross-legged, there you are, you're sitting cross-legged, yeah, and th then you do like Yamaraj Prabhu, you just <laughs> lean forward, and if you're sort of athletic enough, if your body is flexible enough, you can touch your head to the floor, and it's sort of obeisances, but it's not real obeisances, also, Prabhupada, I was told, had the term jackknife obeisances. 
jackknife means it's sort of like a flick knife, if you know what a flick knife is. You just press a button and out comes the blade. Yeah, not like you have to pull the thing open. Yeah, so jackknife means just like down and up. Wait. I offered obeisances. That's jackknife obeisances. So we got a couple of quotes here. This is an interesting one. It's a really interesting one. It's Srimad Bhagavatam 8.23.2. And I'll give you all of these notes if you want. So 8.23.2. It's Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj says, What a wonderful effect there is in even attempting to offer respectful obeisances to you, to the Lord. I merely endeavored to offer you obeisances. But nonetheless, the attempt was as successful as those of pure devotees. The causeless mercy you've shown to me, a fallen demon, was never achieved even by the demigods or the leaders of the various planets. Yeah, just even attempting to offer obeisances. It's so auspicious and and beneficial. Uh, In Bhagavad Gita, there's a very interesting passage, few verses, uh, in the 11th chapter, Arjuna sees the universal form and says to Krishna, this is 1139, you are air and you are the supreme controller. You are fire, you are water and you are the moon. You are Brahma, the first living creature, and you are the great grandfather. I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto you a thousand times and again and yet again. And the next verse, 40. Obeisances to you from the front, from behind, and from all sides. O unbounded power, you are the master of limitless might. You are all pervading, and thus you are everything. And there's a couple more verses. Well, here's verse 44. You are the Supreme Lord to be worshipped by every living being. Thus I fall down to offer you my respectful obeisances and ask your mercy. As a father tolerates the impudence of his son, a friend the impertinence of a friend, or a husband, the familiarity of his wife. Please tolerate the wrongs I may have done you. And Aracharya's comment there, that Arjuna is just so overwhelmed and just devastated by seeing the universal form. He doesn't know what to do. He just doesn't know what to do. So all he can think to do is offer obeisances. And so that's what he does. He just goes down, up, down, up, from this side, from that side, from the front, from the back, down, up, just obeisances. Yeah. So that's nice. When all else fails, offer obeisances. How's that? (laughs) You could say that. This is something nice. This is from Stotra Ratna of Yamuna Charya, which is very beautiful. He's praying to the Lord. The creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material universes, the granting of liberation from the cycle of birth and death, a host of other actions 
you playfully perform, and the words of the Vedas, which are the thoughts sheltered deep in your heart, are all meant for the benefit of they who take shelter of you. This has always struck me very deeply. The words of the Vedas, you know, the words of the Vedas, it's all Shastra and it's all, you know, Bhagavad Gita and this and that. Philosophical, sometimes technical. But he says, the words of the Vedas, which are the thoughts sheltered deep in your heart. Obeisances, obeisances to you who are beyond the power of words and mind. Obeisances, obeisances to you, the only proper object for the voice's words or the mind's thoughts. Obeisances, obeisances to you, the master of limitless powers and opulences. Obeisances, obeisances to you, who are a limitless ocean of mercy. So we've sort of run out of time. We'll carry on. You know, tomorrow, I hope you get back in time. Are you going to get back in time? Because I want to tell you the story of me offering obeisances to Srila Prabhupada <laughs> for the first time. Wow, it's, it's, it's actually quite a story, I must say. But you'd, you'd have to be here. I mean, I hope you're all going to be here so we can start at 5.30. And then there's some other things here. There's, there's a number of other things about obeisances. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Question is regarding the first uh, Seva Aparad from chapter 8 of Nectar of Devotion, no palanquins. So, would a wheelchair be allowed on compassionate grounds, or would we be very strict and say, no? <laughs> he must be carried in. No, we, we would allow. We would allow. Okay. Hare Krishna. We do allow. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>